we are deeper into the season now, viewers. The transfer deadline has come and gone as well, and it was another quiet day for us. Ipswich Town standing our way today. Can we pick up the three points? <laughs> Transfer deadline day brought us one new face and viewers and here he is, it's Charlie Fowler who's come on loan from West Ham United for the season. He can play on that right hand side of the wing and in the striker role as well. Currently a three and a half star player, potential to be a five star player. We are primarily going to be playing him on the right hand side. Crossing could be a little bit better for that but other than that I think he's got all the hallmarks of a very, very good player for us. Acceleration of 17, pace of 15 stood out to me, good passing. Good dribbling, I think he'll be able to get his head down with that flair as well and off the ball and composure to be able to make some moves in that final third of the field for us and try and get the ball into the box. He's joining for the year, as I said, on £13,250 a week. And we've afforded that by selling one player. A bit of a forgotten man for us last season who only made one start for us. And that man then leaving the club is Ryan Gold, viewers. He started, I didn't, I said one game. He started six for us last season and made a few appearances off the bench. Didn't really make the impact last season. Didn't really make an overall impact for us either in those 18 months. We sold him for £700,000. He was on 14000 a week, so we're saving a little bit of money and we've reinvested that into Charlie. I think we've got better options in that midfield now. Gold has left the club aged 31. Spent £3 million on him. Big loss. Did do well, I think, in his first season. But last season did not make the impact that we needed, so he has found himself a move. And plenty of games have come and gone then since we met viewers in that opening day against Huddersfield. After that, we won 4-3 against Watford in a crazy game where we were 4-1 up in the 63rd minute. And then just to give us a little bit of nervous times ahead... Benjamin Gary scored for Watford in the 65th and 68th minute after we scored in the 63rd. Thankfully, we held on and picked up three points on the road. Then we had a London team travelling to us where we played really, really poorly. And as you can see, we scraped two 90th minute goals with Scogland and Gallagher finding the back of the net. I thought we were going to put in an awful performance. Charlton had literally one shot on target. It went in the back of the net. I thought it was going to be one of those days where FM doesn't like us, but it liked us on this occasion with those two 90th minute goals. Then in the Carabao Cup, we were 2-0 up after just five minutes and we went on and won 4-2 against Sheffield Wednesday to progress through to the next round. Then a run of draws hit us, viewers, where we started off with a 3 all draw away at Peterborough with two goals in the 19th minute. One for them, one for us. And we scored a minute later as well in the 20th minute to make it 2 all. Then Soenke put us 3-2 up in the 39th. And then in the 90th minute, Peter drew one back and stayed at home with a point. On the road again, we drew one all after being 1-0 down to Aston Villa in the 13th minute. Solanke with 11 minutes remaining, breaking the deadlock for us and getting us a point. And the third draw in a row came at home against Brentford in a game where we were 2 0 up in a disappointing collapse where they scored in the 89th minute after a Solanke brace. Very, very disappointed that we've not been able to hold on and get three points there. But we turned our attentions to the cup and we put Sunderland to the sword with a 4 1 home victory. And as a reward for that, we've been given a home tie against Bournemouth in the next round. And then after those three draws in the league, the first loss came in a second game of the season where we didn't score. And that was a 1-0 loss at home to Blackburn. Not a good performance by any stretch of the imagination. And we need to vastly improve for this Ipswich game. So after those seven games, we find ourselves lingering in mid-table on 10 points with two wins, four draws and one win with positive goal difference of just plus one at the moment. Positively though, Solanke has got five goals. And joint top player of the match as well. So that's always good. Hopefully he can get some more goals for us today. And more, another player of the match performance. Let's go have a look at the starting eleven for this game against Ipswich. And see if new boy Charlie Fowler can make the impact on his debut. Here we are then. The starting eleven. The starting eleven then viewers is Walter in goal. Amador at left back. Axel who had a lot of interest in him during August. And we have managed to keep hold of him in the middle alongside Evans. Fairlong comes in at right back. Hughes and Wynn in the centre for us today with Miller on the left. Fowler makes his debut on the right and Scoglund and Liam Gibbs start up top for us today. 
We do have a couple of injuries as well then viewers with Velasco injured at the moment for another four weeks to three months with a broken leg that he picked up in pre-season. Solanke is injured, he's out for another seven days. And Perez is injured, he is not far off returning and will be fit for the next game. Jose Ronaldo missed out today as did Duarte and Collins on the reserves. So they will be sitting in the stands today chomping at the bit to get on that field of play. Kickoff is here then as we search for our first winning four with a very high Miller lofts it into the area and Dominic does well in the Ipswich net and he throws it out to Crowley on this right and Miller misses out on the challenge. Crowley comes forward on this right hand side for Ipswich, taking it to the byline. Well done by Amador there and he clears it down which Scoglin takes down wonderfully into Liam Gibbs now. He unleashed an effort and it's gone out for a very early corner just after a minute in this game. Millet will take this resulting call now, gets it in, oh and Hughes was looking for it, it's headed back in and it's headed away now by Ipswich and that is the end of the highlight but already a good start for us there looking a more confident than what we have done in those last four games. What I am wary of though is that we have just been losing games and drawing games from Leeds which is something we need to stop, win with the ball in and Millet doesn't even challenge for it. Coming forward for Ipswich now, though, and we need to win this ball back. That's very lucky. Tosh is in. Oh, and thankfully, he flashes the ball past the post, and that wasn't a load of Tosh. Just looking at the transfer window overall, I think we've had a very mixed window. It's been very hard, I found, to attract the calibre of players that we were looking for. We've got a fair bit of money to spend, about 14 million and 60,000 in that wage budget. But the calibre of players available to us this summer, for some reason, was not as high as what it was last year. And I think that might affect us a little bit. I think what we've brought in is quality, but I'd rather bring in quality than quantity. As Unguru is in here and forces a good save from Walton. So, Transfer window-wise, I think we could have done better, but what we've done, I'm very happy with, and I think they will have impacts on the team. Crowley with the corner, headed away, and 25 minutes coming, and we have not had a single shot on target yet. I'm very, very wary that I'm worried at the risk that we overachieved last season with this squad. Maybe we need to move back to Scoglund up top on his own because he seemed to be a little bit more effective there, but we will keep our eye on things. If I don't feel the results are going the way they should be, Tactics will change as necessary. Dominic for Ipswich now collects the ball to his chest. He will look to play it out just before half time. Launching it down the middle. Diasse wins it back, but Auburn with a ball over the top. Diasse has found himself out of position. And Ungaru shoots, and we've cleared it away. And it goes out for a corner. And at Portman Road here, I think we can class ourselves very, very lucky that we are not 1 0 down. We've given Ipswich a lot of time on the ball, and when they've had it, They've made us look a little bit weak and sloppy at the back, which is something we need to address in the second half. We'll point the finger viewers and tell the boys to go out there and give the fans something to cheer. And individually, we will pump those fists to the boys just to try and spark a little bit of a reaction out of them. It's very, very crucial that we pick something up in this game. I'm very worried that if we don't win, we could start falling into a little bit of a habit of not winning, which is not what we need to be doing. Scoglin's in here, though, and again, a late-ditch challenge. And Ipswich makes sure the deadlock remains unbroken. Will Hughes with a 6.1. He has now been taken off penalty duty. Solanke has been put on it. First penalty he got. He missed it. So hopefully another penalty taker will be able to step up today if needed. That isn't Will Hughes. Win comes forward. He scored an absolute rocket as well while we are offline. And he is really starting to improve Miller into Gibbs. Gibbs. Oh, he's bashed the ball against the bottom of the post. And I thought that was going to be the breaking of the deadlock. Ipswich with the corner. It's headed away, which Downs picks up for Ipswich on this right hand side. Now it's switched the play into Clark from the back. Ball over the top, which Axel deals with very, very comfortably. Hughes into Scogland. Gibbs picks it up from the challenge. Gibbs, one-on-one. -on -one. Gibbs, Liam Gibbs finds his first goal of the season and puts us 1-0 up away from home in the 58th minute. And that's been probably our second chance this second half. And it has made Ipswich pay. Lovely ball by Hughes into Scogland. The challenge is very, very lucky and fortunate the way it's fallen to Gibbs. I thought he might release Scogland again. He hasn't. He's gone on his own and he has gone on his own emphatically to put us 1-0 up. Although, highlight straight away from the kickoff does worry me a little bit. And it's missed at the back there by Evans. Oh, and thankfully, Ipswich don't make us pay. A man as tall as Evans should not be getting caught out there. We will take Will Hughes off. He's only getting a 6.1, which is a little bit of a disappointment for me. 
And we'll bring Gustova Hamer on and see if he can just have a better impact than Will Hughes. Will Hughes, to be fair, if there's a right man available in January, may find himself coming out of the club as well. Because when you look at him, on this, he's 32, 27 grand a week. He's not been putting in the best performances. He's on a lot of money for not doing a lot of work on the field. And that is something that does worry me. And at 32, I don't see, he's not going to get any better. He's only going to get worse. I knew that when we signed him, but they are disappointed with the caliber of performance he's put in. We'll see what January brings and see what players are available to us. Although if it's anything like summer, as I said earlier, could be a little bit of a struggle. Win. Lovely ball over the top into Gibbs. He looks to fire us. 2-0 up. Oh, and thankfully, thankfully we've hit the bar. No, he's hit the bar. <laughs> From a, a cheeky chipped effort, thankfully. I don't know why I keep saying thankfully. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. I wish it had gone in, but wins here. Can we make it two? That's a poor ball, which Ipswich clear away. Ungaroo now for Ipswich, who's picked up a book, and he's all alone here. Plenty of space and fired at Walton, who turns it away. He picks the ball back up. Oh, we're lucky that the ball's gone out there. And thankfully goes out for an offside decision and remains 1-0 to us here. Ipswich have absolutely battered us shot-wise today, but we are the ones currently picking up the three points, and that is all that matters to me. Fowler into Fairlong on this right-hand side, finds win. He looks to get into the box and does. Fires in. There it is. Keeper's near post. I'm not sure what the keeper's doing there, but James Wynn finds the back of the net with a lovely, neat finish. At the near post of the keeper, who should do a heck of a lot better there. Wynn picks it up in the middle third and fires himself into the box. And he's outdone the keeper there. I think a lot of people were expecting him to square it, myself included. But he finds the bottom corner nice and neatly. Keeper's near post. And we fire ourselves 2-0 up and look like we are going back to Nottingham with two points. Two points, two goals and three points on the board. Downs comes forward for Ipswich and that's fired wide. And it remains 2-0 with three minutes of injury time to go. We'll wind the clock down as well and we'll make our final two subs. Millet can come off for Gallagher. And we'll bring Dale Taylor on for Scotland who has a very, very quiet game by his standards. Interesting that Dale Taylor's getting a one star there and Gibbs. It's probably because of the complete forward role. But we'll make the swap and see if Dale Taylor can have an impact. He's been after leaving. We may let him go as well. Didn't really play for us last season. Probably not going to play a lot this season. But it doesn't matter. We have found ourselves with three points on the board after it Gibbs and win goals in the second half to fire us 2-0 to victory. Tell the boys that was a good win, and that is exactly what we need after four games without a win to get back on track and just climb up towards those playoffs where we find ourselves just two goals away from them at the moment behind Sunderland. And what are we, six points off the top and already nine points off the top spot in Norwich. What we'll do is views we'll leave it there for today. We've got a short September and we will come back at the start of October for the game against Bristol City. They're currently sitting 12th, so a team not too dissimilar from us because everyone else around us that we've got coming up at the moment is towards the bottom of the table. Hopefully we can pick up another three points in that game and plenty of three points before it as well. But if you have enjoyed that video, viewers, please don't forget to smash that like button for me, share the video around, and subscribe to the channel for more content. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again for more next time.